What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Today, we're going to be going through 2 Kings chapter 4, and we're going to see how strong the Holy Spirit was on Elijah. I mean, Elisha, who asked for a double portion of Elijah's spirit and the miracles that Elisha performed. But before we get started, uh, you know, a couple prayer requests. First off, um, pray for my grandfather. Uh, he had heart surgery today. It's believed that at some point he had a heart attack. And uh, and he was diagnosed with uh, coronary artery disease and um, had to get heart surgery today uh, out of nowhere. But the surgery, surgery went well. Pray for his recovery. And also pray for my grandma, who's also having heart, heart issues. And also... Most of y'all uh, already know this by now, most likely, but there's a school shooting in, in Texas at an elementary school. At least 21 people have died. Uh, I saw up, up to 20 children, um, second and fourth grade, were killed. Um likely more injured pray that none, none none more of those uh no more die from their injuries you know it's uh it's horrible you know i have uh nieces and nephews in elementary school and you know i can't imagine pray for their families pray for the parents of those who lost children and for healing of any other people that were injured in that shooting. And before we get started, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul, destroyed forever. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with him in his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago. Born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect, didn't deserve any punishment, the death that he died was for us. The death that we deserve in the lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on the cross. So that through him, that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sin is taken away and we receive his perfection and he lived out. Repent and believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later, and through his sacrifice is offering you eternal life. If you believe that and you truly turn to him and ask him to forgive you, you, he will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit and he will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. And now, let's go ahead and get into 2 Kings chapter 4. Hallelujah. Now a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha. Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared Yahuwah, and the creditor has come to take my two children to be his slaves. <laughs> Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, Your maidservant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Then he said, Go borrow vessels at large for yourself from all your neighbors, even empty vessels. Do not get a few. And you shall go in and shut the door behind you, behind you and your sons, and pour out into all these vessels. And you shall set aside what is full. So she went in with him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They were bringing the vessels to her, and she poured. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not one more vessel. And the oil stopped. So she had one jar of oil, and she kept pouring it out into all these different vessels. And that jar of oil she was pouring from never emptied. It just kept pouring, kept pouring oil. It never emptied. And, you know, the oil in Scripture rep represents the Holy Spirit. And we need to be we need to be one of these vessels that are full. 
full of the Holy Spirit. Oh, uh, never empty. And said, and then, then the oil stopped once, she, once they were all full. And she came and told the man of God, Elisha. And he said, go and sell the oil and pay your debt. And you and your sons can live off the rest. And so, you know, it's interesting. You know, the vessels would, uh, we are vessels. The oil is, oil is the Holy Spirit. The creditor came to take her two children to be her slaves. And it's, it's like the creditor possibly representing Satan. The two children representing the two tribes of, or the two houses of Israel. But they, they received the oil. And their debt was paid. And he said, go sell all the oil and pay your debt and you and your sons can live on the rest. Hallelujah. Now there came a day when Elisha passed over to Shunem, where there was a prominent woman and she persuaded him to eat food. And so it was as often as he passed by, he turned in there to eat food. She said to her husband, behold, now I perceive this is a holy man of God passing by, holy man of God passing by us continually. Please let us make a little walled upper chamber and set a bed for him in there and a table and a chair and a lampstand. And it shall be when he comes to us that he can turn in there. One day he came there and turned into the upper chamber and rested. Then he said to Gehazi, his servant, call the Shunammite. And if I remember right, Shunammite is also mentioned in Song of Solomon. Or maybe it was Shulamite. He said, call the Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. He said to him, say, no, say now to her, Behold, you have been careful for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Would you be spoken of to the king or to the captain of, of the army? And she answered, I live among my own people. So he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Truly she has no son, and her husband is old. He said, Call her. When he, had caught, when he had caught her, she stood in the doorway. Then he said, At this season next year, you will embrace his son. And she said, No, my lord, O man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. The woman conceived and bore a son of that season next year, as Elisha had said to her. When the child was grown, a day came when he went out to his father to the reapers. And he said to his father, My head, my head. And he said to his servants, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her lap until noon and then died. She went up and laid him on, laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door behind him and went out. She called her husband and said, Please send me one of the servants and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of, man of God and return. He said, why will you go to him today? It, it's ne neither new moon, new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, it will be well. Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, drive and go forward. Do not slow down the pace for me unless I tell you. So she went and came to the man of God to Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her at a distance, he said to Gehazi, his servant, behold, there there is a Shunammite. Please run run now to meet her and say to, say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? She answered, It is well. When she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught hold of his feet. And Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, Elisha said, Let her alone, for her soul is troubled within her. And Yahuwah has hidden it from me and has not told me. Then she said, Did I not ask for a son for my Yahoo from for my Lord? Uh did I not say, Do not deceive me? 
Then he said to Gehazi, Gird up your loins and take, your, take my staff in your hand and go your way. If you meet any man, do not salute him. And if anyone salutes you, do not answer him. And lay my staff on the lad's face. The mother of the lad said, As Yahuwah lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. And he arose and followed her. Then Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff on the lad's face, but there was no sound or response. So he returned to meet him and said, The lad is not awakened. When Elisha came into the house, behold, the lad was dead and laid on the bed, laid on his bed. So he entered and shut the door behind them, behind them both, and prayed to Yahuwah. And he went up and lay on the child, and put his mouth on his mouth, and his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. And he stretched himself on him, and the flesh of the child became warm. Then he returned and walked in the house once back and forth, and went up and stretched himself on him. And the lad sneezed seven times, and the lad opened his eyes. He called Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite. So he called her. And when she came into him, he said, Take up your son. And she went in and fell at his feet and bowed down to the ground. And she took up her son and went out. So Elijah, Elisha raised the dead. And it's also, you know, You know, it's like the boy, uh, he was a son of a miracle child already. The husband was old. She didn't have any kids. And just like God told Abraham, it's, it's like that story as well. And Isaac is a foreshadowing of Jesus, a type of shadow of Jesus. This is what God said to Sarah. You at th this time next year, year, year you will bear a son. And Elisha said, uh, "At this time, at this season next year, you will embrace a son." The son died and was resurrected, just like you know, j just like Jesus. And so and there's another two miracles here in this chapter that Elisha performed. When Elisha returned to Gilgal, there was a famine in the land. And the sons of the prophets were sitting before him. And he said to his servant, put on the large pot and boil stew for the sons of the prophets. Then one, one went out into the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine and gathered from it his lap full of wild, wild gourds. And came and sliced them into the pot of stew. For they did not know what they were. But it was a poisonous plant. So they poured it out to the men to eat. And as they were eating the stew. They cried out and said. Oh man of God there is death in the pot. And they were un unable to eat. But he said. Now bring meal or flour. And he threw it into the pot. And said pour it out for the people that they may eat. Then there was no harm in the pot. And this is also like the story, um, the waters of Mara, I believe it's the waters of Mara, uh, during the ex Exodus, during the time in the wilderness, the waters were bitter. And, you know, God, God healed the waters. Uh, I think Moses threw a... Uh, Threw something into the water. Uh, I don't know why it's slipping my mind right now. Moses threw a stick into the water or something. And and the waters became clean to drink. Now the last story here. The last miracle here in chapter 4. Now a man, man came from Baal Shalisha. Or Shalisha. And brought the man of God bread of the first fruits. Twenty loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. And he said, give them to the people 
that they may eat. Elisha did. His attendant said, what will, I, what will I set before a hundred men? In other words, that wasn't enough food for a hundred men. But he said, give, give them to the people that they may eat. For thus says Yahuwah, they shall eat and have some left over. So he set them before him, and they ate and, and had some left over, according to the word of Yahuwah, spoken to Elisha. It's just like how Je Jesus fed the thousands uh, with two loaves of bread, or a, uh, I think it's five loaves of bread and two fish. And fed thousands, and there were some left over. You know, Elisha also is kind of a foreshadowing of Jesus with these miracles. He raised the dead. Jesus raised the dead a few times, I believe. Uh, the most popular one would, would be Lazarus. And and also, you know, with the, the miracle of the oil. The oil is the Holy Spirit. You know, the power of God was on Elisha. The Spirit of God was in Elisha, heavily, mightily. And the way he first told his servant Gehazi, he said, Take my staff and go and lay it on, lay it on the boy's uh, face. And he was expecting that to heal him because he had that, the Holy Spirit was on him so heavily. And he was able to do miracles just with stuff like that. And it's it's like in the New Testament how uh, it says they, they at point at one point they were the Holy Spirit was so heavily so heavy on uh, on Paul that they would take uh, just handkerchiefs from Paul and they would people would be healed with them and also with peter how it says in the book of acts that people were just hoping that peter's shadow would fall on fall on them and so i guess the, just his shadow was healing people the power of god was working through them so mightily and working through Elisha so mightily as well. You know, it's it's amazing. And God can work through us as well. We need to seek his Holy Spirit. We need we need to seek him. And seek the seek the gifts to be able to perf perform miracles and and uh heal and and prophesy. Paul said the greatest uh, gift is to prophesy. And that's, we saw, we saw that a few times in this chapter with Elisha. He told the woman, let me pull it back up right here. He said, at this season next year, you will embrace a son. And she did. He prophesied that. He told the woman, "Go gather this. Go uh, gather these vessels, and then pour out into all of them." He said that was going to happen. He prophesied that, and. Um, Even with, even with the bread, said twenty lo twenty loaves of bread, a hundred people, it wasn't enough for all of them. I don't know how the size of the loaves or anything, but it wasn't enough for all hundred people. And he said, "Do it anyway, and there's going to be some left over." He prophesied that. Hallelujah. And that's the end of Second Kings four. Again, keep my family in your prayers. My my grandma, my grandfather on the other side, who just had heart surgery. He's recovering right now. 
and pray for the families of those who lost a loved one in that shooting today in Texas. And that's, that's the end of the study, brothers and sisters. Let's be ready. Let's be right with God. Any of us, any one of us could be going to any time. And we need to stay humble. We need to be blameless, pure. We need to overcome any sin in our life, every sin in our life. We need to serve God with all our heart. We need to spread the word of God, preach the gospel. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, turn to him. Repent and believe the gospel. Jesus loves you. He wants to give you eternal life. If you believe he died for you on the cross in order to offer you eternal life, and you truly turn to him and ask him to forgive you, he will forgive you, he will give you the Holy Spirit, and he will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. And that's the end of uh, First Kings, 2 Kings 4. Thank y'all for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.